You are listening to a Higher Things production. Higher Things is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults through gospel rich content like you are about to hear. Consider joining our supporters who make this ministry possible by donating at higherthings.org slash giving or by clicking the link in the show notes. And now, Higher Things presents The Uncultured Saints with Pastors Eli Leedsow and Harrison Goodman. That's great. Hold on, let me get my... Hold on. Hold on. I hope you fall out of your chair. I've never happen. wanted anything so bad in my <laughs> entire life. <laughs> We're good. We're good to go. What are we what are we doing today? We're doing Mark chapter six, beginning at verse thirty. We're trucking right along to Jesus feeding the five thousand. No, we, uh, no, there's something that happens before that. Banter? Witty banter. Okay, you're setting the bar a little higher than me <laughs> on. Um, there's there I know there's banter. <laughs> oh yeah, there's nothing witty about anything that happens here. No, wait, Mark 6. Yeah, verse 30. Yeah, no, but yeah, but that's not the feed, feeding the five thousand. There's two things that happened before that, right? What? We're at Mark 6, 30, where it says Jesus feeds the 5,000. Like, the <sighs> the header is usually useful. <laughs> it's not always right. I admit it wasn't part of the original manuscripts, but it's it's sort of like if, if, if Blue were here, we would have some clues. Uh, I'm just saying that we could yeah. we could maybe it's figure awful. it out. And an awful show. Steve. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And Steve turned out to be an awful person. Which one is he? Was he the first one or the second one? He was the guy who well, had yeah, the pet two guys. Blue. Well, yeah, he was the first one. He was the reason they needed a second one. Oh, Okay. So anyway, uh, Mark 6, verse 30, the apostle returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he, being Jesus, said to them, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And so this is what I meant. Boat. This is what I meant, that it, it doesn't start right at the feeding of the 5,000. Well, no, right? like there have to be 5,000 people before Jesus can feed them. I understand. Well, no, I understand. But like this, it's interesting because... We, when you look at chapter six itself, right? Uh, he's rejected at Nazareth, and then he sends out his his twelve apostles in verse seven, and then we're getting them coming back. But we've got that little interlude that Mark puts in there, that huge um, John the Baptist getting beheaded thing. So, right. I'm curious, and I'm I'm not smart. You know, I'm getting this from commentaries and and digesting all this sort of stuff, but. <clears throat> um, it's curious that uh, you've got him sending out uh, the apostles and then the apostles coming back. And in between that, you've got a uh, a martyrdom. Almost as if this is going to kind of be, hey, apostles, this is kind of. What, yeah, what, this what is the environment expect. that you're working in. Right. And so, yeah, when they, they come back and tell Jesus the reason that they're going to a desolate place is because they're heartbroken. They're scared. They're they're real, real concerned about their future uh, job security. And yeah, this is even just Jesus mourning over this. He, he's known he's known John for a minute. Um, well, wait a minute. Hold on. No, because I'm going to take that. I'm going uh, to disagree with you there because this okay. is a, a John the Baptist account there isn't. Um, it isn't happening in time and space, remember? Because mm. in chapter one, uh, you hear that John is arrested, not, not mm-hmm. killed, but you hear that he's arrested all the way back in right. chapter one. So um, my guess is this isn't something that happens while they're Chronologically. away. Okay. Right. But it's it's Mark's way of kind of uh, showing that, uh, hey, apostles and, and maybe even later disciples and, hey, maybe even Christians who take up the cross and follow Jesus, like... This you is know, a part of it, it. It's it's suffering, right? The part part of part of uh, uh, discipleship is 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 suffering, and, and, hmm. and it might come all the way to, to martyrdom. Yeah, I never assumed that it wouldn't be chronological, but I like I'm willing to wrestle with it. Uh, Matthew has it right before too, the death of John the Baptist, right before the um, the feeding that would lead to. Yeah, and maybe it is. Maybe he's arrested all the way back in chapter one, and then he's and just uh, held sit, for a while, sitting in prison for a while, and then that could be. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I bet he wrote some cool, like, locked up tunes, played a harmonica. Maybe. No, probably not. Maybe. Um, kind of like anyway. the rooster in, in, uh, 
in Robin Hood, the Disney's yeah. Robin Hood. Actually, that's yeah. it's, it's, it was it was too. a lute. It wasn't a harmonica, but no, but you know, modern times. Um, <laughs> All right, sorry. Continue. They, go. They, being the apostles uh, and Jesus, went away in a boat to a desolate place by themselves. And now many saw them going and recognized them. And they ran there on foot from all of the towns and got there ahead of them. And when he, being Jesus, went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came and said, this is a desolate place and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and the villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, you give them something to eat. And they said, shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said five and two fish. And he, being Jesus, commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass so they, uh, being the 5,000, sat down in groups by hundreds and fifties. And taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces of the, uh, uh, and of the fish. And those who ate of the loaves were 5,000 men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be to God. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, I'm falling over again. I hope so. All right. So what do you got to say about this? I mean, um, this is pretty well known. This is the, uh, uh, I believe, this is the only miracle that is recounted in all four Gospels, minus the resurrection. I was going to say the resurrection for, for sure is, um, but yeah, this is one of those like huge things. And it doesn't necessarily make sense that this would be one of the things that all four of the, the gospel writers would, would like hearken to, especially since like, we don't even get Christmas in all four of the gospels, even like this one. Um, right, but, but rather, half. right. Um, but the feeding of the 5,000 makes the cut for some reason. And so that just that every single gospel writer talks about it, it means there's probably more here than meets the eye. Um, and I, I think, honestly, if I was going to start with this, um, I, I would actually say that one of the useful things to do is to compare the four um, narrative accounts, because then you get to sort of see what each of the apostles is, is driving towards, what what sort of details Mark uh, would have or, or not have compared to the rest. Uh, oh, I hope but, you did that, because I didn't, and you're the one bringing it up, so... But but here, one of the places uh, that <laughs> did, that Mark you? stands special <laughs> is that Jesus had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Um, the compassion is the thing that that drives this. Um, that that Jesus has compassion on them enough to uh, to to address reality and and all of its shortcomings, not just with with words and promises, but with with even actions that would that would address their needs. Yeah, and that compassion word. It, I mean, I think uh, Lutheran pastors love to to jump on it. Uh, at least Lutheran pastors in, in our uh, time frame, because I think it was is mentioned a, a couple different times when we were at seminary. Um, yeah. It's this gut wrenching, right? It's 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 literally like the the gut spilling out type thing that, right. that he has, right? Um, so maybe in 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 our vernacular, we would say gut wrenching compassion, or his heart broke for them type thing. Right, right? It's, it's a real, th not just like oh, but like mm. a real deep seated concern. Right. right so we'll like not that, I, not I, I when... get some other stuff, but but you okay. you're going down that train, so I don't. I'm I don't going down derail that train. it like I usually do. No, let's 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 take a, a hard left. What, what do you see? So no, no, no. Keep going with the compassion. Then I'll then I'll go. Then I'll take All a right. hard left. Um, I, I think, too, that this actually stands as a, a teaching moment for the disciples. Mark doesn't call his attention to it quite the same way that, that some of the other uh, gospel writers do. But he, he makes a point that, that this gift will be given through means. Um, that the compassion that Jesus has uh, will actually be addressed through time and space, through people and, and, and stuff. Um, because like if Jesus can feed 5,000 people with five bread five loaves of bread and two fish he could probably do it with none he could have probably just like zapped some hamburgers there everybody would have you know had a nice little barbecue on the 
in the countryside. Right. But but rather he actually goes to the disciples and and he says, "You're going to feed the sheep," and they are completely unprepared for this. Uh, and that that actually makes me feel better uh, for when I am completely unprepared to to be an under shepherd in his church. Um, and since I'm selfish and Jesus is compassionate, that's that's something I'm going to gravitate towards. That uh, one of the things that God has done is He has promised to sustain His people through other people who have no idea what they're doing. That that's that's comforting to me. <laughs> yeah, especially since you're one of those people. I hundred percent right? am. Yeah, I mean, uh, pastors should have uh, uh, should have this uh, tremendous um, uh, humility uh, upon them, and and uh, I know oftentimes I I don't. Um, but there is this there is this level there, right? Like each time that you um, get ready for divine service and you're about to put that stole on, like there's a there's mm-hmm. a heaviness, a weight for that. So, yeah, the very fact that Jesus is is going to uh, uh, supply for the needs of of his people here, and he's going to do it through means, tangible means, and he's going to do it through people, right? Like you said, he could have just said abracadabra and every single person could have had a picnic basket, right? Mm-hmm. And it, it, it would have been done. But but no, he does it through these these tangible means. And, and, and that, I believe, points forward again to how he's going to continue to supply his church and give his gifts to his church. And obviously we can see Lord's Supper, Eucharistic things in here. And maybe you want to get to that in a little bit too. But <clears throat> one thing that um, I found interesting here is is uh, we've got, it, it appears as if Mark is, is laying out, um, uh, laying out a, a way for us to see that, that Jesus is this, this long promised Messiah to come, right? The, the Deuteronomy 18 thing where Moses is saying, you know, from among uh, your brothers, uh, somebody's going to rise up, right? And, 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 and lead you. <clears throat> and that's right before they go into the promised land. Um, and of course, in the short term, he's talking about who he's talking about Joshua, right? Mm-hmm. But in the long term, then he's, he's obviously talking about Jesus so much so that, uh, in the book of Acts, um, when, uh, Peter and John and Stephen are being, uh, uh harassed at, at, uh, by the, the Sanhedrin, uh, they go back to that thing like three different times. Like Moses said, so Moses said, Jesus was going to show up <clears throat> here. He is. You guys are completely overlooking it. But even more so than that, what what I found interesting was um, that that we've got uh, we've got Jesus here being somebody who is uh, 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 watching over these people as as uh, sheep without a shepherd. And uh, I believe it's in Numbers, um, and I'm going to turn there real quick. I think it's Numbers. Uh, 27 if i can i'm glad you looked it, it up because I, I that was so familiar to me and i couldn't place it so um let me see here da, da, da. I, i'm hoping i'm getting it right that's not right that's not right i apologize now I'm, now i'm going off here numbers yeah 27 15 through 18 there we go joshua uh succeeds uh, moses yeah but numbers 27 um so 15 through 18 moses spoke to the lord saying let the lord the god uh, the God of the spirits of all flesh, appoint a man over the congregation who shall go before them and come in before them, who shall lead them out and bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord may not be as sheep that have no shepherd. So the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit and lay your hands on him. <clears throat> So we've got all the way back in numbers, we've got uh, the Lord who is uh, uh, appointing Joshua to be that <clears throat> that man to lead the Israelites into the promised land because uh, so that they won't be uh, like sheep without a shepherd. And now you've got uh, Mark uh, describing Jesus in the wilderness with all the people. Uh, remember in Greek, Jesus and Joshua are the same, are the same name, right? Uh, meaning Yahweh saves. And so uh, here you've got Jesus in the wilderness with a, a group of Israelites. Um, and how does he see them? as sheep without a shepherd. And so he's going to be their shepherd, which then speaks very, very much to um, uh, uh, Ezekiel, uh, right? I think it's Ezekiel 38, and there's some sections in 
uh, uh, Isaiah, I believe, that either alludes to it or speaks very specifically to it. But I think it's Ezekiel 38, where, um, or 36, excuse me, or 34, I don't know, something in the 30s, where uh, Yahweh says, because the the, uh, priests uh, failed in their job as being under shepherds, Yahweh is going to be the shepherd of his people, right? And he says, I'm going to shepherd my people. I'm going to give them what they need. I'm going to do X and Y and Z for all these people. <clears throat> Excuse me, frog in the throat. And so now there, there's actually, actual... go ahead. No, I was just going to, I was uh, going to hack for a while. So I was going to cover no, I'm just going to conclude here, um, wrap it up. And now you've got Jesus who is Yahweh, who is God in the flesh, actually specifically, literally doing what he promised he would in the Old Testament. Right. You you even have there's there's a lot of twenty uh, third Psalm vibes here too, um, yeah. As the kids would be uh, want to express uh, that that we have the the shepherd who makes them lie down in green grass, um, and then feeds them. Uh, I, it actually I think teaches us more about the twenty third Psalm than it necessarily even does about the feeding of the five thousand. The twenty third Psalm is is a communion Psalm. It's a go to church Psalm uh, that though we be surrounded by every evil on every side the lord sets up a table and he puts a cup on it that runneth over full of blessings and everybody leaves fed and satisfied how is that not jesus feeding us with his body and blood at, at communion how is yeah. this this not an illusion again to this where again mark won't take this to um to john six uh the way that that well, john does in john six but but at the same time <laughs> Uh, even just thought that he took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples. Uh, there, there are sort of language that that harkens us to the words of institution. Yeah, very much so. And like you said, the Psalm twenty three, right? He prepares a table. I mean, just, mm-hmm. just it's it's Eucharistic talk. It's it's uh, uh, yeah, it's feeding five thousand talk. It's all of that. <clears throat> So that's that's to say that feeding the five the feeding of the five thousand isn't so much um, it's not the Lord's Supper as we would understand the Lord's Supper to no. be, but it, it points to it's a type of it's a picture of the Lord's Supper, right? But it also, in a lot of ways, shows us where we should and where we should not go looking for God's help today when we have trouble. So the twenty third Psalm is one that nobody like brings out on a good day. You know, they're like, I've just had the the best Funeral day song. ever. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. Yeah, no, we we hear the twenty third Psalm after tragedy. Just, just without fail, this is our go-to when things are real, real bad. It's a funeral psalm. Uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a natural disaster psalm. It, it's a everything is falling apart psalm. And why are the people out here in the wilderness? Is that a rhetorical question? Am I supposed to know? No, tell me. Well, they're out there because they they know Jesus is there. So right, they're but wanting to see Jesus. Him? Yeah, what do they want from him though? Well, according to who? I mean, so we can go to the other gospel writers from okay, this, forget, this, okay. this account. Okay, if you're going to if you're going to John, mm-hmm. you hear uh, retroactively that they want a miracle man, right? They want Miracle right. Max, right? From uh, from uh, uh, Princess Bride, right? <laughs> that's exactly it. That's what they want. Um, they that's want a good throwback. Max. Yeah, that's right. a really good throwback. I, I appreciate that. Um, let's see how many more of these you can work in now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, they they go out there looking for for uh, the, the kind of help that addresses their immediate earthly needs. And instead, what they are given um, are glimpses of a, a Savior who cares for us in a heavenly and, and, and spiritual way that actually does even address our physical needs in a way that, that withstands ever needing to be hungry again. Because this is the problem. Um, if, if they all went out there for, for dinner, that's fine. They're still going to want breakfast the next day. I know this because like I've traveled with kids and you can feed them once, but like they're going to just get hungry again. Right. And, and that's exactly what they do in the, in the Gospel of John. I mean, presumably, mm-hmm. they, I, not presumably, they do that in, in all of it because it's, it's a historical thing. But John's the one who brings that out. The next day they wake up and he, they're gone and they, or he's gone and they tr- track him down because they want mm-hmm more miracles lucky charms um <clears throat> so so what we have though is is when we are in, in, want to pray the 23rd psalm when when everything's falling apart it's not that god doesn't sometimes answer us in concrete earthly ways to preserve our life he absolutely has uh he, he still does but the one thing that that stands one way or the other is that he continues to set up that table in the presence of our enemies 
and and prepare it by placing a chalice on it that runneth over. Um, the the kind of feeding that God has promised us is is one that that actually satisfies not just unto this life, but but unto to life everlasting. I like it. I do too I like because I, I well I don't I hate it honestly I I really do I, I want just my immediate problem fixed so that I can come up with another immediate problem to take to Jesus to to have him address. But he has a better idea here. Um, no, I like it in the abstract. <clears throat> yeah, I like it as I'm sitting right now. Abstract is fine. <laughs> right? But I don't like it. You're right. The sitter in me doesn't like it in the reality, right? I could say, <clears throat> oh, that's so beautiful right now. And then when I uh, uh, leave this, this building and I have an issue, I'm like, come on, where are you, God? Fix it. <laughs> right, exactly. <clears throat> but then, yeah, we're we're called to repentance. We're called to uh, come come to where he promises to give himself to us mm -hmm. time and time again. Do you have anything with with sort of the the pieces that were taken up um, afterwards? I got yeah, a little bit. Go on. <clears throat> um, again, it it seems like an overabundance, right? And mm -hmm. not seems like it is. We can just understand that much, right? They start with five loaves. They've got 12 baskets full. However big those baskets are, it doesn't matter. It's more than five loaves. So, and that's, and that's leftovers, right? <clears throat> so right. there's more than enough for those present. And we can understand maybe then theologically that this isn't just uh, Jesus feeding those people. Cause otherwise if Jesus, if he can, if he can do a miracle, he can give the exact amount of food that's needed and there won't be any leftovers. Right. <laughs> Jesus um, is so bad at math. Guys. Right. Oh shoot. I made too much. <clears throat> but the fact that there is leftovers and I mm -hmm. would think theologically that speaks to something. And the fact that there's 12 baskets full theologians for centuries have been saying this, this is alluding to the 12, tribes of Israel and that there this is the fulfillment of especially with if if he's the uh the long awaited uh, uh uh Joshua right the 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 real one who would be uh, risen up amongst the brothers um then he's the one who leads and supplies and and does everything for for Israel as a whole um interestingly enough when i was reading this <clears throat> or or um studying this um one of the comment commentaries pointed out that the the greek word uh, for baskets that's used here is uh, a specific uh, Jewish basket, hmm. right? And so it's not just uh, it's it's a particular basket that that the Jewish people would use, and so it's that name. And the only reason that he brought that out, and I guess that wouldn't mean anything, but later on, I believe it's in chapter eight when we hear about the feeding of the four thousand, where Jesus is is doing the exact same miracle, it would seem, although he's doing it not in the land of Israel, right? So mm -hmm. it's for the Gentiles too. Uh, the bas the word for basket there is a specific <laughs> Greek and Roman basket that that uh, the Gentiles use. So um, literally, one in Rome is is what we're going for. Well, well, literally, it's 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 not the same miracle. I mean, it is the same miracle, but it's not the it's, same miracle. It's Jesus is for the Jews and for the and Gentiles. Gentiles, right? That's pretty. I like that. Yeah. I, I like that now and on a bad day. Uh, the only other thing I had is that they all ate and were satisfied, and there were <clears> still <throat> leftovers. Uh, and and I say that because there are sort of uh, people who want to erase the miracle out of this. Um, and sort of, you know, try and find this to, to mean, and everybody ta was taught the value of sharing. And sharing is satisfying, you guys. It, it's just, isn't it better when everybody's a smaller amount of happy than you being all the way happy? And of course, that's not true. It's better when I'm happy. Um, but but uh, satisfied, it actually, uh, it, it comes from a word that, that would actually mean to, to be fattened up. Um, like it, it's right. not just sort of like, and their hearts were were overflowing, but their stomachs weren't. Um, that they actually ate like Thanksgiving meal feast um and they're like that that um they are fattened satisfied i couldn't right. eat another bite satisfied <clears throat> nobody was walking away going mm, i could have used a little bit more right and, and so that that there is such an abundance being taken up because like 12 baskets full of bread is more than five loaves of bread like th that they ended with more than they started with um, right. he, th there needs to be sort of a, a clear reality here that, yeah, th th this is, this is something miraculous. Um, and it, it's, it seems like a, not a big thing to fight over. Cause like, if there is such a thing as God, I think that he would be able to make more bread out of bread. Um, but 
at the same time, because this has sort of Lord's Supper connotations, it's worth uh, driving home the point that God is doing an awful lot with a little here. And I know what it looks like. And I know sort of the, there is an impotence even on, on the Lord's Supper to make it just about sharing and, and you know, you know, togetherness, um, which is, is they're, they're great concepts when true. Uh, but the problem with sharing is like, if you've ever had to try to do it, 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 it almost needs a miracle just not to be combative. Um, and for then to, to accomplish something that where God's presence would be required and not something that we could do completely fine without him, because you can share toys without Jesus. You, you genuinely can. You, everybody can, can, who likes each other can probably share a meal without fighting. Um, but at the same time for, for God to be involved, it means that there will be more there than, than meets the eye and the things that he promised actually do satisfy. They, they fatten us up. Right. And then, so if this does have Lord's Supper connotations, then when you go up there and it seems like all you're eating is a small piece of styrofoam that's made out of water and wheat, and you're taking a sip of wine, you're like, this isn't a meal. But no, it is It is the fullest meal possible. It is. It, it satisfies you through and through, um, not because of the sustenance that it brings, but because of what our Lord has promised. And so, in again, in that way, it's yeah. Everybody who's leaving uh, the table that that thou is preparing before before me in the presence of my enemies at the Lord's Supper, um, yeah, we're, we're we're leaving satisfied. And that's the thing too, whether we realize it or not. I think too, right? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Because again, if it's uh, I don't feel any better when I leave the Lord's Supper then I'm putting the impetus of uh, the Lord's Supper on me and not on not on my Lord. So if if, uh, if I feel uh, refreshed when I leave, thanks be to God. If I don't, thanks be to God, it's okay. Uh, he delivers what he promised. Right. Actually, it's, it's important then to, to carry over just how long everybody felt satisfied after this too. Um, everybody was totally satisfied until they needed something again. You're, you're going to in the same way. On, on the best of days, go to this table and and eat and drink to your salvation and actually say amen and and feel a, a glimpse of of just how much glory is truly present and 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 feel genuinely comforted and that that's great. But even if if that were the case, there'll be another need. Right. The 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 the, the satisfaction dissipates quickly. But it's okay. This, we still have a merciful God. Right. And that's why we're we're uh, or should be strongly encouraged to. Right. Do this often and not just mm. often, like quite a few times or twice a month, but like, hey, when when your Lord is offering you this, mm. eh, probably don't deny it. Yeah. Love don't, it. Say, don't say I had it last week. I'm good. Yeah. I had dinner last week. I'm, I'm fine. Right. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, we don't have yeah. time to go into walking no, on water, do we? Let's do that next week. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Cool. Peace.